Welcome the governor, and then we have the director of FEMA. We did a little short tour, and most everybody knows the president of the Mescalero tribe. Uh, there's been so instrumental in gathering uh, so many donations, and they have a lot here. County manager Randall Camp is here with us. So we want to welcome you to our area. We want to thank you for your interest in what you're doing. We're depending on the government. Uh, the state has uh, seen what we've gone through. They've been with us here before, and we have their full support, and I appreciate that. We're learning a lot of new things that have been happening through FEMA organization-wise that we're very pleased to hear about. And because there is so much devastation that we've got to get these things to our citizens. I'm very appreciative of the housing that's already on the way. Thank you, General. That and the organization that they've brought. And I want to thank the surrounding communities for everything that you've done. It's been totally remarkable. Uh, our bedroom neighborhoods, our communities that are just right outside where so many of our employees live, families and friends have been so overwhelmed. We've been so overwhelmed with your generosity and care and we cannot do it without you. But this is just the very beginning, folks. And so these folks that we're standing here next with today are going to help us through the long haul, which will be the next five, six years or more. We have watershed issues, but immediately we have to take care of our people. We need to get them home. So Monday morning at eight o'clock, uh, we're going to have our folks come back into the community. And I want to stress to everyone that if you're a resident, we want you to please come in at eight o'clock on Monday morning. If you're not, and you're a visitor, you have a second home here, we want you to wait, please. Give these folks time to come in. While some still have homes, most do not have utilities, electrical, or anything else. But a lot of folks have nothing. And it's gonna be emotional and impactful to these folks. We need to be here to support them. We need to be able to feed them, house them, clothe them, and we need to give money in their hands. So we need to be here as a community. The government can't do everything for us. And so it's gonna be up to our citizens to rebuild this community. And we're gonna expect help from these folks here. And I know that we're gonna get it and we'll stay after it. But again, this is the, it's a big task. Nothing like what this community's ever seen. And so we're gonna stay after it with the help of the whole state of New Mexicans. New Mexicans, we're gonna get it done. So without further ado, I'm gonna hand it over to the governor and then we can go on down through what we need to talk about. So, Madam Governor, thank you. And folks, could we ask everybody to slide to yes. the center of the room so that we're all centered in the room? Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, uh, and uh, also to so many of the county officials and the tribal leadership for the uh, Mescalero Nation, Apache Nation, and the president. Uh, these emergencies, uh, we're no strangers to them. That doesn't make them any easier to either address or manage or rebuild. Uh, there are so many emergencies around the country and uh, natural disasters. Having uh, the administrator on site uh, when we're still fighting the fire is a testament to the clear commitment to do everything we can to support the men and women in this community to rebuild, to start that recovery and to mitigate continuation of damaging issues like flooding. So there's good news in terms of fighting back the fire. It's not out, it's not gonna be out. Um, I would love to have a crystal ball. I'm always wanting firefighters to have a crystal ball. They don't, but we're in a good position to protect people, to begin that process. Uh, and I really want to thank the firefighters. I want to thank all the first responders. I want to thank all the volunteers who stood up sheltering, food, support, cash assistance, and any number of efforts. Uh, the community of Roswell, uh, bar none, has done an incredible job, but I don't want to forget Capitan and Hondo and everybody in Lincoln County who in a moment's notice were sheltering animals, people, families, and uh, protecting and caring for their neighbors. Uh, it's an amazing effort. That's before I get to the uh, Mescalero Apache Nation who did all the same and quite frankly, 
uh, was uh, the place where most of, uh, not most, but a sizable number of our firefighters and first responders have been both hosted, supported, and re uh, received navigation support. I'm gonna wait for questions about containment, acres, structures, and any number of those issues. This was about a unified briefing and a unified approach to safe, effective uh, return and making sure that we start the process of full recovery. So I want to thank the mayor. Does it go to the president or the um, president Padilla? I'm going to give the mic to you. Thank you very much. And we just want to echo a lot of the expression of thanks and appreciation for all the donations that people have been making. We have gotten an incredible amount of donations and we are already cashing a little bit, well, quite a bit of the excess that we do not need down in our evacuation site. And we are storing it at the old convention center at the end of the Mount Gods. And we are gonna transfer it over to Rio Doso as you guys start trying to come back home as well. And we're very, we just, you know, really feel for the village of Rio Doso for all the homes that have, they have lost and, and people that will be coming back to some terrible situations in their homes. And we, we have people now under evacuation still in Mescalero. I am one of them actually, and, and we're hoping to return to our homes soon. And, and we're one of the, my big concerns is, is mitigating the watershed damages and the flooding, the horrendous flooding that we're gonna be seeing. So we are working together as much as possible with Redoso the fire team, the bear teams, the rehabilitation people to, to make sure we, we put a good effort in there. So I just want to thank everybody though. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dora. Randall Kemp, I'm the Lincoln County Manager. Uh, Lincoln County is hurt, but we're not out of the game. Okay. And the people here are in for the long game. They know what living in this county can be like. This mountain has acted up a few times before. Never quite like this in the many years I've been here. Uh, I am always impressed by the cohesiveness excuse me, of the surrounding communities, the surrounding counties, and the New Mexicans. We're getting support from all over the state, all over the country. We've had calls from Japan, from from outside of the country. But the amount of support is, has been tremendous. We need it. Our people don't know what they're coming back to. I believe in the county, we're approaching almost a thousand homes lost, okay? Lost, completely gone. When the fire ran Cedar Creek and the surrounding neighborhoods, Alto. We have a lot of people that want to see their properties we're asking them if they don't, if they're not local, please wait until we've secured those areas. It's still quite dangerous in there. They don't understand what they're coming to. We don't have the resources right now. We were without power. So in the grocery stores, all their refrigerated goods, frozen goods, they've had to throw them out. We haven't restocked yet. Our fuel system right now, the gas stations are closed. The fuel tanks are running dry. We're trying to get fuel trucks in here. We can't support external people for very long. We And we have recovery crews running around the power crews. We have over 100 power poles to be replaced. There are places that won't have electricity for days. People need to understand it's not what it used to be, okay? Going to the restaurants is not a probability. They lost their food too. They're waiting on restock. Their workers have been evacuated. All of these things, we need them to think about. And then when they do come home, it is still very dangerous when they start digging through their burned homes. So, but I want to thank everybody. This has been uh, a, a horrifying experience and it's been a great experience to see everybody working cohesively for the common good and just pulling together. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Deanne Criswell, and I'm the FEMA Administrator. And I just want to start out by saying on behalf of the President, our deepest condolences go out to everybody who has lost a loved one or has been impacted by this fire. 
um, they don't get any easier, Governor, um, and it just is heartbreaking uh, to continue to come into communities that are experiencing the impacts from these severe weather events. I had the opportunity um, to talk with the governor, with the president, with the mayor. I really appreciate your comments, county manager, to hear some of the challenges um, that the communities are already facing, but also to anticipate the challenges um, that they're going to face in the days, the weeks, and the months to come. And I just want everybody to know that we have declared the Federal Disaster Declaration, which is opening up all kinds of federal resources to come in and provide support for this current response. We are still in a response phase, but also to simultaneously begin this recovery process. And we will ensure that we continue to have these open lines of communication to understand what the recovery needs are, and we can bring and coordinate the entire federal family to come in and provide what you need to help support not only this response, but also to support the ongoing recovery efforts. Um, I just wanted to say thank you to all of the first responders uh, that really put their lives at risk in those immediate days and hours um, following the fire. Many who lost their own homes, whose families were impacted, yet they gave up all of their time and effort to make sure that their community members were safe. And I think as you heard from the county manager and others, it's always so inspiring though to see how the communities come out to support each other and that the neighbors helping neighbors and I always consider them the true first responders because they're the ones that know who's the most vulnerable in your community. They're the ones that are going door to door and making sure that they're going out to keep people safe. And so I just wanted to thank everybody, this whole community effort. When I see New Mexicans, this sense of resiliency, this sense of camaraderie, it's just really inspiring. Um, and I just want all of you to know here that we will be by your side throughout this recovery. Uh, there will be tough days ahead, but we will continue to ensure we have the right resources here to support you. My name is Jason Stevens. I'm the acting special agent in charge for Homeland Security Investigations. And while you may wonder what we're doing here, and most of you know us as the principal investigative arm of the Department of Homeland Security, we normally go after the organizations that exploit America's trade, travel, and finance. But let me back that up to our greater goal, which is public safety. Um, we were fortunate to be called and be able to come to your community and help out on the public safety aspect. Uh, we received a call at about 2 a.m., 2.30 a.m. on Monday morning going into Tuesday from the uh, uh, operational center saying, we don't have any communications, we have no, we have no internet, we have no phones. And so for us, that's a significant issue, right? You have no public safety that you can provide to the community at that point. So we rolled our mobile command center up here where I know we've kept it active since that morning. So we wanna thank you for allowing us into your community. We, we live in the very communities that we work and this was a great opportunity for us to come here to be able to see your community work together and to see the resilience of it. Thank you. Thank you. We have time for a few questions, so if you please give us your name, your organization, and who you would like to answer your question. Uh, Jim Speary, Union County Leader uh, out of Clayton, New Mexico, uh, stationed down here in Lincoln County. For this gentleman, Mr. Stevens, correct? Yes, sir. Homeland Security. None of the photos show that it was a lightning strike. There's all kinds of rumors that it started on the reservation, and it's all kinds of rumors that it was started by some people that live on the reservation. Can you confirm that anybody has been detained yet? And if there is an investigation, can you tell us what the status of that investigation is at this time? I've not been apprised of any of that. That would fall under the responsibility of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. And so I would defer that to uh, Special Agent in Charge, Raul Bahanda of New Mexico. So has anybody briefed they, they the Commander-in-Chief? give everyone a chance to ask questions. Has the anybody next question? briefed the Commander-in-Chief of the status? Not that I'm aware. Okay, right. thank you. Next yeah, question. Just, we, we know those investigations are ongoing. Remember, in the heart of the fire, getting to where you need to go to finish those investigations is minimized. When the investigations are done, it's federal and state folks all doing the investigations. At last count, we were at about six investigators. Uh, I'm looking at my general. There may be now seven. They'll finish when they finish, and that end result will, of course, be available to me in a briefing all of these partners and the general public. There's no information uh, as of yet, so anything that anyone is hearing is speculation, 
and is not fact-based, and we'll know when we know. Thank you for the question. Yes, sir. Uh, Griffin Rushton with KOB4. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about what parts of town you guys toured today, and tell us a little bit about what the destruction you guys saw? Uh, you bet. I I'm gonna give this to the, the mayor and then the president, because they've been here where they can every day. And uh, it's both devastating, but also uh, I really appreciate the opportunity to understand the recovery responses with the administrator that are gonna be required. Uh, Mr. Mayor. Yep. So far we've been through Cedar Creek. I know that they've been through Alpine Village, uh, Forest Heights, and that whole area through there, which is total devastation. So they got a good look at what it was, the, the slight little bit of rain that we had that caused a significant amount of flooding. They got to see just what that can cause so that we know we're standing by watching because we know that it, there is going to be more flooding when we do get moisture. So they've seen that impact on a small scale. They've seen a lot of the homes that are just totally gone, devastated. They've seen the landscape that is not going to be able to be renewed anytime soon. We've talked about what do we do with the standing and dead trees? How do we remove those things? So we've talked about debris removal. We've talked about all the folks that live there that now are gonna be coming back to the community. How do we get money, resources into their hands? So they've seen a good portion of, of those things. They haven't seen it all. We didn't have time to do that, but they have seen enough. This isn't the first time they've, they've seen this stuff, but they understand the large uh, impact that this has had on all of our communities. And so they are ready to take action. So they have seen those areas. Uh, and I think that's today all we've seen. So Madam President. As far as Rio Doso, today was the first time I actually got to go into some of the areas that burnt really severely. And, and that's just part of the safety issues. You know, I've been coming to the briefings every morning up here at the fire camp, keeping track of what's going on. On the reservation, I have seen a bit more, but even then going into active fire, fire areas is, is not an allowable thing, and I'm not trying to override any of the, the safety precautions that are in place. We have a lot of damage in the forest, we do. It burned very hot in some very, very steep areas, and we're really concerned about the, the flooding potential. That's all I've really got to say about that. I haven't seen much more than that, though, to tell you the truth. And I just want to add one thing. I mean, while we were able to um, assess the damages in just a few of the neighborhoods, the really important part of this visit was the conversations that we had. I need to understand what the mayor's challenges are and the things that he's worried about going forward, understand what the governor needs in order to help support the response in here. And so it's those conversations with the local leaders that are so valuable for me to make sure I'm bringing the right federal resources in to support that response and recovery effort. This is an open question. So uh, Natasha Leva, KKOB, how many people are missing? And there's a big site that everyone's going on to to report missing people. And how can they help by telling where other people are. Yeah, it's a great question, and I appreciate it. I've been a very complimentary administrator. Um, uh, the New Mexico media is really working to keep people safe and to keep them informed, and it's been an incredibly productive effort. That was one of the topics of conversation, because people are using informal ways to communicate. We're not trying to discourage that in more formal ways. So the Riodoso site, is where we want to direct people. About 29, we think, is the number uh, for individuals that we have not connected with their family members. Uh, we're going to reconcile these lists. We've been doing that anyway, but we're going to do it again. Here's what we need. We need to encourage people. If you have not heard from a family member, we need to know about that so that we can do wellness checks, coordinate those efforts, use our local, state, policemen and women and guard, and we're gonna do everything we can to both find them and connect you. Uh, that effort by Rio Doso, by both the county and the city, was quite productive early on. Without cell coverage, you might imagine that family members living in another community in New Mexico or out of state, it was really harrowing 
And in those first 48 hours, people really had trouble. You couldn't download your messages. So you might remember a number to call, a daughter, a son, uh, but it, it got limited from thereafter. So about 29, please, you could call the state line as well, which is 833-NM-FIRE-6. Uh, and the Rio Doso website and telephone numbers are also very effective. We're gonna keep integrating. We'd like to make sure that everyone is accounted for, everyone is safe, and that we've done as much as we can to make sure that we're taking that off people's plate as we work to rebuild. So thank you for the question. Do you have anything to add? No, you covered it all. Okay, all right. We have one, one last question. Go ahead. Jessica Lovell with Channel 13 in Albuquerque. It's for FEMA. Um, now that you've been here, you've kind of looked around. A lot of people who were in Roswell yesterday want to know what would that funding from Congress actually tangibly look like here? What are some things that you've assessed throughout the day? Yeah, so there's a couple of different programs that have been authorized through the Presidential Disaster Declaration. Uh, one of them is individual assistance, and that is for residents, family members who have lost either their entire home or had damage to their home or had to evacuate and incurred costs. I encourage everybody to, one, first contact your insurance company, um, and second, register for assistance with FEMA. You can do that through going to, right now we have teams that are inside the evacuation shelters that can register you there. You can go to disasterassistance.gov and you can register there, or you can call our 1-800 number, 1-800-632-FEMA. That's the slowest way. I always encourage online or going to one of the centers. And what that will provide immediately is we have things like displacement assistance, so costs that were incurred if you were evacuated and, and you had to pay for some place to stay. Or if you go back and your home has um, had some damage but you lost all your food and so forth, it'll cover some of those immediate needs. But the first step is to get into the system and to get registered. And I know that we've had fires here, unfortunately, in the past. I also want to let people know that we've made a lot of changes to our program that just went into effect this year. And so if you were affected in the past and perhaps you were denied assistance by FEMA, you are probably eligible for assistance this time because of the, the changes. And so again, please register because that's going to allow us to work with you. Everybody's needs are specific to them and we want to work with them on a case-by-case -case basis. On the other side of what we do is public assistance. That's the critical infrastructure, that's the costs that the state and the, the county and the city have incurred to respond to this fire, uh, the damages to the public infrastructure. Those are our longer term recovery costs that we will be working with them to help them reimburse for the costs that they incur, things like the debris removal or uh, damages to the water drinking system, which we talked about today. And so those are all costs that we will reimburse the county, the state, the city, the governor um, for um, to repair those facilities. I also want to encourage, you know, as we go through this, is that we also, as we rebuild, we try to work with you to rebuild in a way that makes you more resilient to future disasters. And that really is, you know, one of the ways that we can help minimize the impact that unfortunately the severe weather continues to bring all of these different challenges to us. I want to do one more. Yes. Uh, we will bring the state cabinet here starting Monday. We've got a smaller group, as uh, many people know, in Roswell already doing state benefits. Uh, they don't prevent you from getting federal benefits or other uh, local resources. We also have FEMA disaster experts, so they know how to navigate you there. But cash assistance, insurance, food, cash cards. I also want to point out that uh, this community didn't wait, and uh, Lincoln County fundraising was very robust so that you can get gas cards and food and other donations in the hands of individuals. There's some state organizations that have been doing that, all nonprofit, and certainly the uh, Community Foundation, the Southwest has led uh, for the rest of the state getting donations in. But look, there's a ton of benefits that we need in the hands of individuals. They couldn't go to work, they have to pay their bills, they don't have groceries, uh, they don't have any other supplies, we want that taken care of for as many people as quickly as we can. So they'll be here uh, starting on Monday. Uh, we will have them here as long as they need to be here for as many hours as they need to be here to support people where they are. The big question is this, and that may can be a, another press conference, Mr. Mayor and Madam President, County Manager, about rebuilding and where the state 
can lean in and how we support the local government. That's not all going to be federal. In some ways, it might be a minimal federal response, although the congressional delegation is looking to make that more robust. That requires an act of Congress. That's underway. But uh, I've told the mayor, expect your state to find ways to deal with rebuilding and housing. And until I know what that looks like, I won't know exactly what that looks like. But being on the ground is a good indication of just how much we're going to need to invest to make as many New Mexicans as whole as we can. You can't ever take it all away, particularly someone who's lost a loved one. But we can do more than a lot of communities can do, and we're all going to step up. So starting Monday, everyone's going to be right here. Thank you. One last thing on the housing issue. Monday, we will have temporary housing coming in. We're going to set it up over at White Mountain at the parking lot. It needs to be a paved surface. So I'm told that it'll house around 500 people, you know, and have sleeping quarters, bathrooms, things of that way, nature. We're working with the Red Cross, I believe it is, to be able to feed people. So we're getting that done in a temporary fashion because a lot of folks are going to be coming to town, as we said earlier, they will have nowhere else to go. They're out of money, they're out of time, their emotions are shot. So we need to be there, support them, and we're going to have the housing hopefully up Monday, Tuesday of this next week. And then we're working on longer term solutions that we'll be looking around the other parts of the community that the village owns property to set those homes. So we are have already thought of these things. We've been working on them for a long time. I want to express my dear sincere thanks to the citizens, but also to the staff at the village of Rudoso that has we've repurposed them, we've trained on it. So that once was one position in the in the village now has been reassigned as a coordinator of whatever. And they've done a job, many of them worked in 24 hours straight, 36, getting an hour or two sleep here and there. And so trying to get the message out and I thank the public for being uh, supportive and patient because we did lose so much of the information abilities. We couldn't talk to anybody. There was no internet. So we're now up and running. We're going to be getting out regular information to you. We have hotlines set up so that you're able to call to get questions answered. So we don't want to dodge anything. We want to answer everything that we possibly can. If we don't have the answer, we'll do our best to get it. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you all very much. That's the